I'm going to go through the key pieces of clothing that are required for riding in bad weather. And I'm also going to explain the key features that you need to look out for in order to pick the best ones. The first bit of kit on our list is bib tights. Now, we all have that one mate who thinks it's cool to ride in shorts, whatever the weather, but personally, I'm all for comfort and keeping my knees and lower legs warm. So bib tights are great for doing that and they make you much more comfortable in cold weather. But what to look for in a pair of tights? Well, they typically range from around 50 pounds right up to 200 pounds, but I think the best bang for your buck is achieved around the 100 pound mark, which is where these Endura Pro FS260 tights come in at. Now at this price point, you get really good quality materials which feel comfortable against your skin, are breathable, but are also good at stretching so you get a nice fit. And you also get other good features as well, such as good quality chamois pads, which are comfortable on your bum, and also things like these ankle zips. So these zips are really useful for uh, getting the tights on and off, but also maintaining a good, nice, tight fit around the lower leg. I'd also recommend looking for reflective details such as these because they increase your visibility, which is important if you're riding at night or in bad weather. Bib tights come in different thicknesses for use in different temperatures. So you can get really, really warm ones for when it's sort of naught degrees, and you can get lighter ones for a milder conditions as well. But most people aren't gonna buy five pairs of bib tights. So in that case, I would suggest buying a good all-round pair. And again, these Endura ones are sort of a favorite here at Cycling Weekly. They're a great all-round pair that's good for a really wide temperature range. And in terms of fit, the thing to look for on a pair of bib tights is that you get a nice tight fit around the leg and you don't get bunching around the knee joint. You see on some tights when the fit isn't as good, you'll, or if maybe if they're too big for you, you'll get a load of sort of bunching like this around the knee, which is unsightly to look at, but it also means you can get sort of chafage on the back of the knee joint as well, which is uncomfortable. The next piece of kit on our list is a good quality cycling jacket like this Castelli Perfetto I'm wearing here. Now it's like a normal long sleeve jersey, but it's made from a more sophisticated windproof fabric, which is also highly breathable. And this means that jackets like this are capable of operating in a really wide temperature range and they're really versatile. The other key feature that they have is that they've actually got a water repellent coating on them as well, meaning that they're more than capable of seeing off rain showers. But because they're quite figure hugging and quite tight. That means that they offer really good insulation, even when they get a little bit wet. Now, the great thing about this kind of jacket is that it's tighter fitting than a sort of flappy waterproof jacket. It doesn't quite offer as much waterproof protection, but it's a bit of a trade off because by being tighter fitting, it's significantly more aerodynamic, which means that if you're racing, it'll save you a lot of energy but for it to function properly and be aerodynamic, it can't be flapping around, which means you need to get the right size and not have too much excess fabric. So I'd always recommend trying one on before you buy. And if it's figure hugging and fitting you properly, that'll also maximize the fabric's potential to be breathable as well. A good thing to do when you try it on is to assume the position. So. Don't just stand up like this and expect it to be the right fit because it's not designed to fit you when you're stood up like this. It's designed to fit you when you're in a riding position. So don't be afraid of looking weird in the shop, but like get down like you're riding your bike and, and assess the fit that way. And it should give you a nice bit of coverage on the bum, but also you shouldn't have bunching on the tummy or chest area as well. Next, we're gonna suggest a packable waterproof jacket. Now this is the kind of jacket that you can crush up and stuff in your jersey pocket. A packable waterproof jacket like this Gore One 
differs from the Castelli Perfetto in that this is a hard shell and offers more water protection than this soft shell, which is only water resistant. However, if I was doing a race or competing in an event where I was conscious about my time, then I'd go for an option like this, because as a soft shell, it gives a better fit and is more aerodynamic on the bike, meaning that you can go faster for the same amount of energy. There are lots of options available on the market to suit your budget, but generally you get what you pay for when it comes to waterproofs, and I'd strongly recommend that you get the best one that you can afford. So right at the top of the scale is this, and it is expensive, but it's an amazing product. So the more you spend, the more packable jackets become, but also fabrics like Gore-Tex are excellent because in addition to being highly waterproof, they're also really breathable, so things don't get too sweaty when you're working hard on the bike. Next, we're gonna recommend a good quality pair of cycling overshoes. Now, the reason for this is that as soon as it starts to get cold, your extremities are the first parts of your body that are sacrificed in order to maintain your core body temperature. And as a result of this, they can feel disproportionately uncomfortable if you're not keeping them warm. Now, a water-resistant pair can be worth their weight in gold. But we'd really recommend going for a neoprene pair because like a wetsuit, once they become saturated with water, they actually are great at keeping the heat in and insulating your feet. Next is gloves, and it'll depend on your personal preference, but below sort of nine degrees, I tend to wear gloves. Now, the thicker the glove, the more insulation it'll offer. But this comes at a trade-off because thicker gloves mean that you have diminished dexterity in your fingers, which can mean it's difficult to do things such as get in your pockets and get food or operate the touch screen on your cycle computer. Unless you're going to be riding in the coldest of temperatures, we'd again recommend that you go for a good all-round midway option, such as these Gore Windstopper gloves we've got here. And they also have other good features as well, such as these little pads on the fingertips, which mean that you can use touch screens. Another feature commonly found on cycling specific gloves and on these Gores is a nice soft panel on the back of the thumb, which is designed for wiping away your snot. The last item on our list is hats. Now, caskets or cycling caps, such as this Castelli one, are really popular because of their retro fashion appeal, but also they're quite functional as well because the peak can do a really good job of keeping rain out of your eyes. But I tend to favour a skull cap because they're a little bit warmer and they also do a great job of keeping your ears warm. And I get cold ears. Cycling caps are also perfect for posing at your favourite cafe stop as well. Now, there you have it. That was our list of essential kit for riding in bad weather, but it's not an exhaustive list. So if you've got suggestions that you think might be useful to others, then please suggest them in the comments section below. And if you like this video, then why not subscribe to the Cycling Weekly channel? But until then, I'll see you later.